In this lecture, we will understand the next three properties of Laplace transform and they are convolution in time, multiplication in time and differentiation in time. And it is clear that we are going to perform convolution of two time domain signals in property number seven and we will perform multiplication of two time domain signals in property number eight and we will perform differentiation of the time domain signal in property number nine and in all the properties we will observe what will happen to the Laplace transform after performing the operations. So let's start with the property number seven and I will give you the property. The proof will be similar to the convolution in time property of Fourier transform. So let's quickly understand the convolution in time property of Laplace transform. Let's say we are having two time domain signals F1t and F2t and the Laplace transform of F1t is equal to F1s and the region of convergence is equal to R1 and the Laplace transform F2s is the Laplace transform of F2t and the region of convergence is equal to R2. Now if we perform the convolution operation and have F1t convolution F2t, F1t convolution with F2t, this means we are performing the convolution in time. We are performing the convolution between two time domain signals. And in this scenario, we will have a new Laplace transform because we are having a new time domain signal. Let's say the signal we get after performing the convolution is FT. So we have a new time domain signal and for this signal we will have a new Laplace transform and the Laplace transform will be equal to the old Laplace transform of the first signal, the old Laplace transform of the second signal multiplied together and the region of convergence will be equal to R1 intersection with R2. I will explain what is actually happening in the region of convergence here. We are having one region R1, we are having another region R2 and then we need to find the common region which is R1 intersection R2. Now the ROC must be greater or equal to R1 intersection R2. It is not like ROC should be equal to R1 intersection R2. It can be greater than or equal to R1 intersection R2. In simple words, we can say that ROC must contain R1 intersection R2. If you remember the first property, which was linearity property, there also we got the same ROC, R1 intersection R2. And by this we mean ROC must have R1 intersection R2. It can be more than R1 intersection R2. So this is all about the convolution in time property. Whenever you convolute two time domain signals, their corresponding Laplace transforms are multiplied. Now we will move to the eighth property which is multiplication in time. And this time we will perform multiplication instead of performing convolution. So we will multiply signal F1t and signal F2t. And the resultant Laplace transform will be equal to F1 as convolution with F2s divided by 2 pi j or we can write multiplied by 1 over 2 pi j and the region of convergence will contain at least R1 intersection R2. So this is our multiplication in time property and you can see when we multiply two time domain signals then the resultant Laplace transform is convolution of two Laplace transforms divided by 2 pi j and therefore this property is also known as convolution in frequency because we are having the convolution of frequency domain signals. Now we will move to the ninth property which is differentiation in time. Let's say there is a time domain signal ft having 
the Laplace transform fs and the region of convergence is equal to r. Now we will differentiate ft one time with respect to time. So we have dft over dt and in this scenario the Laplace transform will be equal to the old Laplace transform multiplied by s where s is the complex variable and the region of convergence remains the same. To know how we have obtained this result, you can follow the proof of differentiation in time property of a Fourier transform. The proof will remain same and if we perform the differentiation of ft n times, then here we will have s power n. So s power n will be multiplied to the initial Laplace transform if we perform the differentiation n times. So this is our property and this property is for bilateral Laplace transform. The property will change a little for the unilateral Laplace transform and uh, you have to remember one point. The properties we are having will remain same for bilateral and unilateral Laplace transforms except two properties and they are differentiation in time and integration in time. So we will understand the differentiation in time property for unilateral Laplace transform. Let's differentiate signal ft with respect to time and times. In this scenario, the unilateral Laplace transform will be equal to s power n multiplied to fs. Then we have minus s power n minus 1 multiplied to f 0 minus then minus s power n minus 2 multiplied to f dash 0 minus minus s power n minus 3 multiplied to f double dash 0 minus and so on. So this is our differentiation in time property of unilateral Laplace transform and you must have seen this result in mathematics. Now we will understand what are different terms in the Laplace transform. Fs is the Laplace transform of time domain signal ft. F0 minus F0 minus is the time domain signal ft when t is equal to 0 minus. This means t is just less than 0 and f dash 0 minus is equal to the first derivative of signal ft when t is equal to 0 minus and f double dash 0 minus is equal to 2 times derivative of time domain signal ft when t is equal to 0 minus.